Welcome back to the solutions manual. In this video, we will solve the problem app 6 1 from RC Hippaler Engineering Statics 15th edition. According to this problem, we have to determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. First of all, we have to find all the support reactions. So at the point A, I have a roller support. So I just have a vertical support reaction. At the point C, I have a pin support, so I have a vertical support reaction as well as the horizontal support reaction. So let's label them. This right here is AY, this is CY, and this is CX. Now we can apply our equations of equilibrium to find these support reactions. So my first equation would be summation of moments at point C equals to zero. I am considering the counterclockwise direction as positive. We can see that the line of action of the Cx and Cy is passing through the point C. So these two forces do not have any moment arm with respect to the point C, which is serving as our pivot point. So these two forces will not produce any moment about point C. This Ay force is trying to rotate the truss in clockwise direction about point C. So the moment produced by the Ay force will be taken as negative. So negative Ay and the moment arm is 4 plus 4, 8 meters. The 4.5 kN force is trying to rotate the truss in counterclockwise direction about point C. So the moment produced by the 4.5 kN force will be taken as positive. So positive 4.5. And the moment arm is this 4 meter distance equals to 0. So from here, Ay comes out to be 2.25 kilonewtons. Now for Cx, we can do summation of forces in the x direction equals to 0. I am considering the right hand side as positive. So we have Cx minus 4.5 equals to 0. So from here, Cx comes out to be just 4.5 kN. For Cy, we can do summation of forces in the y direction equals to 0. I am considering up direction as positive. So we have Ay plus Cy equals to 0. So Cy is equals to negative Ay, which means negative 2.25 kN. Now since we are getting a negative answer, and earlier we had assumed Cy to be in the upward direction, but we are getting the negative answer for that. So it means in actual Cy is directed in the downward direction. So these are our support reactions. Now we can apply the method of joints to find the force in each member of the truss and whether the member is in tension or in compression. So starting from the joint A, so if I draw the free body diagram of joint A, then it would look something like this. I have a vertical support reaction Ay. I have the force due to this member AB, which I am assuming it as a tensile force. I have a force due to this member AD, which I am assuming as a compressive in nature. So let's label them. This right here is Ay. This is the force AB and this is the force AD. Now we have to resolve this FAD force into its components. So we have a horizontal component and a vertical component. This angle right here is, let's call this alpha, which is same as that angle right here. So the horizontal component is FAD cos alpha and the vertical component is FAD 
sine alpha. So for alpha, we can consider this triangle. which has a base of four meters and the height of four meters as well. So tan alpha is equals to opposite, which is four divided by adjacent, which is four. So from here, alpha comes out to be 45 degrees. So now we can use our equations of equilibrium. So my first equation would be summation of forces in the y direction equals to zero. I'm considering up direction as positive. So we have a y minus f a d sine alpha and alpha is 45 degrees equals to zero. So f a d is equals to a y over sine 45 and a y is 2.25 kilonewtons over sine 45 so from here f a d comes out to be 3.182 kilonewtons and since we are getting a positive answer and earlier we had assumed f a d to be a compressive force so in fact, it is a compressive force because we are getting a positive answer. Now for the force FAB, we can do summation of forces in the x direction equals to zero. I'm considering the right hand side as positive. So we have FAB minus FAD cos alpha and alpha is 45 degrees equals to zero. So FAB is equals to FAD, which is 3.182 kilonewtons times cos 45 degrees. So from here, FAB comes out to be 2.25 kilonewtons. Since we are getting a positive answer, and earlier we had assumed FAB to be tensile, so in fact, this force is a tensile force and the member is in tension. Now we have to repeat the same procedure for the other joints as well. So now considering the joint B. So free body diagram of joint B would look something like this. I have a tensile force due to this member AB. I have a force due to this member BC and I am assuming it as a tensile as well. I also have a force due to this member PD and I am assuming it as a tensile as well. Let's label them. This right here is the force FBC. This is the force FAB and this is the force FBD. First of all, I'm going to apply summation of forces in the y direction equals to zero. I'm considering up direction as positive. We just have a single member FBD, which is equals to zero. So it means FBD is a zero force member. So it is neither in tension nor in compression. Now for the force in the member BC, we can apply the summation of forces in the x direction equals to zero. I'm considering the right hand side as positive. So we have FBC minus FAB equals to zero. So from here, FBC is equals to FAB. And FAB we have calculated as 3.182 kilonewtons. So 3.182 
2 kilo newtons and since we are getting a positive answer and earlier we had assumed fbc to be a tensile force so in fact it is a tensile force and the member bc is in tension so so far we have calculated the force in the member ad ab bd bc now we have to find the force in the member cd for that we are going to consider the joint c so if i draw the free body diagram of the joint c then it would look something like this we have the force due to the member bc which is tensile in nature we have the force cx we have the support reaction cy and we also have a force due to the member cd which i am assuming as a compressive force so let's label them this right here is the cx this is cy this is the force bc and this is the force cd now we have to resolve this fcd force into its components so we have one horizontal component and one vertical component now let's call this angle as theta which is same as this angle here and to calculate the value of this angle theta we can consider this triangle which looks something like this this is the angle theta and the triangle has a base of 4 meters and the height of 4 meters so again tan theta is equals to 4 upon 4 so theta comes out to be 45 degrees so the horizontal component becomes half cd cos theta and the vertical component becomes half cd sin theta so now we can apply our equations of equilibrium so my first equation would be summation of forces in the x direction equals to zero i am considering the right hand side as positive so we have cx plus FCD cos theta and theta is 45 degrees equals to 0. So from here, FCD is equals to negative CX over cos 45 degrees and CX we had calculated earlier as 4.5 kN. So FCD is equals to negative. 4.5 over cos 45 degrees. So from here, FCD comes out to be negative 3.182 kN. And since we are getting a negative answer, and earlier we had assumed FCD to be a compressive force, so in fact, it is a tensile force, and the member CD is in tension. So let me summarize the whole solution. First, we calculated the support reactions. So we had Ay as 2.25 kN, Cy as negative 2.25 kN, and Cx as 4.5 kN. Then we had the member F A B, which is 2.25 kN, and the member is in tension. Then we have the force in the member A D, which is equals to 3.182, and the member is in compression.
Then we have the force in the member BC, which is also 3.182 kN and the member is in tension. Then we had the zero force member, which is the member BD. So zero force member. So neither in tension nor in compression. We have a force in the member CD, which is negative 3.182 kN. And since we are getting the negative answer, because we, earlier we had assumed it as a compressive force, but in fact it is the tensile force and the member is in tension. So this is it for this problem. I hope you would find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any questions or any doubts in the free body diagram or in the equations of equilibrium, then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.